did have a video as well. I went out yesterday and bought myself a Benzomatic plumber's blowtorch. It came with the instructions, obviously. You got your flux and your solder. Now I've got to do this outside because this stuff is pretty damn dangerous. So what I'm going to do, if I get myself, I'll find out some way to expand that. Flange it over here. I'll put it on the inside of this if I can. Solder that in. This will come off into a manifold. It should join the same way under this compressor. It should tee off into this pipe here. So yeah, this will be my manifold. They'll, they'll both be on the manifold, copper manifold. They'll come up and screw to here. So the main challenge is, is yeah, the soldering. Because this has to be pretty damn clean. Yeah, about there you get the copper. Don't melt it though, it gets pretty hot so you got to be careful. And you can't tip the um, bottle at any more than a 60 degree angle, otherwise the liquid goes up and goes poof. Makes a mess. So that has to be, yeah. Got to find it to solder that and that's going to go downwards. If I can. If I point it down, all the liquid's going to come out of here. Be forced into the manifold. Makes it easier to flush the moisture out of it then. So, if I can find something like that, or bigger to fit over that, which I don't think I'm going to find. This is this is the same size as this. Had something that size would be good, but this will fit over here. But this compressor is um not really strong, uh, powerful enough. It just gets too hot too quick. So I'm going to use these ones. Find out how to solder them. If I can find, I think I might have some of this big pipe left over. I might look at the end of the um. The junk pile at the end of the scrap where we've got a pile of scrap might be in there. So I'll just look for in there. If I find it, I'll use the rest of this pop I cut off this. That would be that'll be a good idea because it's the right size. So yeah, anyway. I'll just have the compressors set up how they work, except instead of using hoses, they're gonna be teed off onto a manifold, which will be coming out, and find a way to connect that to there. Well I'll probably use as less copper pop as I can. So I'll probably go from there, we'll have a, that brass fitting or something, soldered on the end of that, so the end's broken off. I'll make an um, expansion joint, I'll flange it over that and just solder it on. And I'll screw a fitting on there, and I'll screw it from there to there to there. So we can screw it, like I don't know, with a high pressure hose or something with some good fittings. So it's, um, I can move it around and change the location of it and all that. Make it all um, portable. So yeah, as far as this goes, it's all set. It's just the plumbing. The next challenge is the electrical side of it. But I might have to find a way to put a pressure gauge in this. If this was a, had another bit coming off here, I could put a gauge here, but either way, we'll do all that one for now. We'll see how it goes. Probably put a gauge on the outlet here. So yeah, I'll go look for some more pipe. I'll see what I can find. And I'll try and, um, yeah, find out how to fit it over that. I could desolder that off. I'll try these side on this off actually, that might be a better idea. So that can fit it straight over this, where, where it was already soldered. That way it's already clean, I can re-solder it a new bit. That'd be a better idea, so yeah, I'll do that. Okay, well, view is all you do, you hold it there, on an angle, no steeper than that for safety reasons, like it says in the instructions. Hold it to the gist of the edge, at the end of that, end of the inner blue flame has to touch your arm um, joint. Heat it up, get your pliers, just slowly rubble it carefully. Don't squeeze too hard because the copper will be very soft once it's heated. Yeah, that's a bit I took off down there. But you do your rubble carefully with the pliers as it starts to break loose. Keep the heat on it, twist and twist and pull, and it will come off. So yeah, now once I've done that and done that far, I'll get me um other piece to put on there. Now I don't have a um I don't have a, a proper copper pot flaring tool, so I'm just gonna. Stick this to the inside and push it, smash it in with a hammer until I get the right size and yeah, make do it like that, do it that way. Then what the next challenge is getting that really clean and soldering it. That's a major challenge of copper soldering is getting the good clean joint. Because this one here, I'm not going to be using this. I've, already, I've got some um, uh, silphos that well, it's, it's like this, except it's like a bronzy colour. And it's coated in the blue flux. Hey, sir. Who's doing there? <laughs> anyway, yeah. Coated in like a blue flux and it's soft fluxing. It doesn't have to be so clean when you use that. So, yeah. yeah there's the best location to do it. It's out in the open. 
I want to do my experiments using the copper soldering. I'm going to probably use a solid projection TV housing. Put a heat proof thing over the top. Get the rest of the TV, put it back together. And use that plastic um, that was once the screen. That, you know, they got a perspex in front of that fail lens. So you use that perspex. I'm going to cut a hole at the top so I can slot it up. Put my hands under it, slide the screen down. Have a fan at the back where the mirror normally goes. So yeah, I can work from the front of it, slot it up, put my hands under. Do the work, have a fan sucking everything out while I'm doing the work. So yeah, in other words, it might be a nice um, soldering fume cap that protect me so I don't get any fumes toward me. So my next project, making a fume cabinet. So yeah, I've got to try and hold this in the vise somehow without squashing it too hard and just push this in with a hammer until I get the desired size. So yeah, then I'll solder it on, work out um, my bends. Then I'm going to drill a hole in here, stick that in there, and that's going to be a challenge to solder that in without um, making too much of a mess because this has to be pretty damn clean. So yeah, either way, I've, heat, I've heated this end up with a blowtorch, got it hot, so it cooked all the crap off it, the paint and that. Then I went over it with a um, sandpaper, but I'm going to use a, um, one of those bench grinders that a wire brush wheel on it. That would finish it off even better and make it pure, so I get a really good join. So yeah, I'll do this, clean it, and I'll solder it, and I'll show you. Okay, viewers, well I got this thing all expanded, pushed on. It's tiles like these, I really need a tripod. But anyway, yeah, I got it done. Now I'm gonna get the solder, tip it forward so the solder has a chance to flow in. So I try it as it is to get the lightly torture. Lighter. There we go, light it up. Show you how to do this, you like that. There we go. Here, silver solder. Face it, I should be wearing goggles for this, but anyway. I'll get the light back in the way. Hopefully, the camera can see this. Yeah, not a lot of the flux. Solder's getting soft. I need a very steady hand for this. It's the first time I've worked on silver solder, so. Yeah, it's not as easy as it looks. Yeah, the flux seems to um, work. I'm going to get the wire brush and I'll clean it a bit more first. So yeah, that stuff just melts and fluxes it as its solder gets to flow. I'll get myself a little wire brush. That's the useful for cleaning it. Yeah, just not at the um, old solder. That's a pain in the ass about silver soldering here. They have to get a very, very, very pure, clean copper surface to, roll, uh, to solder. Otherwise, it just won't stick. Then you get too much solder flow. The flux just acts like um, anti-stick. The solder doesn't want to stick to it. Try again. Alright, I'll get the slider up again. This time I'll go. Yeah, this angle's a bit hard to work with. Bit too much wind. Now I'm here, I'll light it. Support it. It's supposed to heat the copper up, then you put the solder on it. Heat the 
join up. Get your joint hot, then you put the solder on top of that, and the solder should melt and flow through if I do it right. So, uh, it's still on something. Be careful when I breathe this stuff in because this stuff's toxic. Turn it off, have a look. Back to that crappy, toxic crap to go away. I like the oil as well. Let that smoke clear out of the way. So what you gotta do, you heat the side of the joint up, put the solder on top, and as the gravity pulls at this angle, the solder will flow in under the joint. As it's hot, the hot it'll just melt, it makes it molten as it's hot, flows in, then it cools and it sets, so yeah. That's kind of what it's going to look like, but that has to be all the way around it. It's not bad for not bad for a first timer. This is my first time with um used sort of solder, so so yeah, not bad for a um, beginner. Yep, I get the wire brush and I'll clean it. I'll inspect it, see how good um my joint is. See how I do that. Uh, the oil, that's a good thorough wire brush. It looks pretty good. Now I'm going to block this off. Power the compressor up, spray some soapy water on there. And see if any bubbles form. If not, that's a perfectly good seal. So I'll do that and I'll show you that. We'll leak test. But in the meantime, I'm going to figure out how this has to go from the manifold. So that, I'm using this instead. I don't want to use that perfectly new bit of copper. I'll use this old bit. So that will tee into there. Or, I might, not, I might not even block that off, instead I just put a fitting on there with a pressure gauge on it. Might be a better idea. Put that will go down there, this will go downwards. So the liquid crap like condensation will flow down into the manifold, away from the, um, from sitting in the compressor and rusting the crap out of it. So yeah, that will go out. Liquid will go down there, That's air go in there, join onto the next compressor. Then I'll end it here with a fitting of sort of solder on here, which I'll put a heavy duty high pressure fitting hose on there, screw there, and the tank up here so I can make it all flexible for movement. So yeah, I'll elbow this down, cut it, drill a hole in here, solver solder it, same on the other compressor. So yeah, I'll do that, but first a little leg test. <laughs> 